God gives us time to grow. God is good all the time, all the time. Dear brothers and sisters, last Sunday we had the parable of the sower. The seeds the sower planted fell on different kinds of soils, representing the different kinds of people who listen to God's word. The parable of today's gospel turns things around. The soil no longer stands for human beings, but for the world in which we live. The things that grow on the soil, wheat and weed, stand for human beings. As any good farmer or gardener knows, weeding a farm can be one of the greatest threats to the life of the crops. When the crops are young, it is not always easy to separate them from what is not needed. In life, it is exceptionally difficult to extricate the evil from the good without damaging the good. To be sure, there are certain evils that simply must be addressed right now. No questions, no hesitations. But there are other evils that are best left alone for the time being, lest more damage is done in the process of extricating them. Time is needed before these can be properly done. In the case of human beings, weeding out the bad from the good can be a very risky business, for no man clearly sees what is in the heart of another human being. Only God knows what is in the heart of man, and God teaches us today to be patient with those who appear to be bad in the eyes of men. God gives all of us a second chance because he wants us to grow. The readings teach us four important truths. The first is that God is patient. Like the owner of the field, our God is patient. The book of wisdom makes this clear when it says, Though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. The psalmist puts it thus, Lord, you are good and forgiving. Although God gives all men time to repent, how often do we want it to be otherwise? We want God to immediately punish those whom we judge to be wicked or evil. James and John wanted thunder and fire to destroy the town which did not listen to their preaching. Hitler's extermination of six million Jews did not bring peace to the world. When it concerns the other person, I want God to destroy him quickly. But when I am faced with the sins of my life, I want God to be merciful. Nevertheless, we should be comforted to know that God is patient. He is always ready to give us a second chance the time we need to grow. The second lesson is that all kinds of people are found in the church, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The church is made up of saints and sinners, wheat and weed. All sorts of people were around Jesus like the colors of the rainbow, the learned, the ignorant, the good, the bad, tax collectors, prostitutes. Pope Francis says the church is not a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. The church is not made up of perfect people. Even those who do not know how to pray are part of the church. That is why St. Paul tells us in the second reading that the Spirit comes to help us to pray. Sometimes we want a perfect church like the Donatists who centuries ago wanted only the perfect to be members of the church. 
we are reminded that holy persons are present in the church, but it is also a school for the transformation of sinners since God gives us time to grow. The third lesson is that although evil is present in the world, it, it is not greater than the power of God. God sows his good seed, his word, his love and compassion, but his project is met with opposition. Like the weeds in the farm, evil is planted in the world by God's enemies. Often we wonder where God is when bad things happen. Some people say that if God is truly almighty, why should bad things even happen? I met a man recently in one hospital, and he said he had a request to make. His request was, tell your boss to take the devil away, and all the evil in the world will stop. He wanted God to take out the devil. Yes, God has the power to take the devil away, and all evil will end immediately. But he allows evil alongside the good because he wants us to grow. Whenever we experience evil, we should see that as an invitation from God for us to grow in perfection. In the battle between good and evil, evil can never be a match for the good. The fourth lesson we may learn is that both good and evil habits have small beginnings. They both grow from a tiny mustard seed. Small acts of goodness daily, like yeast mixed with flour, will make us grow to be good people. Similarly, great sins all have small beginnings. They grow from temptations to commit small sins. Once we consent to these temptations, they grow larger. Therefore, one must be careful to see that no bad habits take root in one's life. It is far easier to get rid of a sinful habit when it first begins to take root than later when it has grown and produced great sin. Even though God allows the wheat and the weed to grow together, we must be aware that there is a time for harvest. St. John the Baptist says, Jesus will gather the wheat into his barn, and the weed will be burnt in everlasting fire. Hell is real. We should ask ourselves, at the resurrection, Will I be part of the wheat or the weed? God wants us to be part of the wheat. That is why he gives us time to grow daily. We have to make use of this time before it becomes too late. So that on the last day, we may be in God's ban to enjoy the happiness of heaven with all the angels and saints the happiness that will last forever and ever. Amen.